All right, all right, all right. Hey, Dave. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, Mary. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Mary Perry, and I'm David Zen. And we and are unscripted. I think we... it's almost like wheels off the bus unscripted. And you're about to find out how unscripted we are. <laughs> how unscripted we are. You really do. Well, Dave, today I'm coming from beautiful Rock and M Ranch down in South Texas. And nice. well, just, uh, I know some people say like, oh, I'd love to see the animals. So I don't know if you can see over in my window, there's a couple of horses there behind me feeding. Very nice. So and we I have Mary in a manger today, huh? Mary in a manger. Oh, good one. Very seasonal too. And then I also brought you another horse. Too. Oh, nice. Very nice. You know, as I look at that, that reminds yeah. me. Um... <laughs> not ready. I'm not ready. Go. No, I'm just, since we're totally inscripted today, you know, as part of our 12 days of Christmas, which we are going to get into. Yes. We need to come up with a little gift, an unscripted gift to give yes. our, our, guests, our guests when we do our unscripted live. I saw that. We were promising them something. Yes. So, yes. I meant to ask you about that. <laughs> well, I'm asking you, you know, we need to get our staff on this, you know. You. When they're yeah. not running around the ranch there. Uh, <laughs> when, they're, when they're not over there. Well, we will, uh, yes, we will. We have promised you a small gift when you participate. And I really want to highlight that day because I think that's going to be so much fun. So uh, so maybe we should like open this up to our our viewers or viewer. Viewer, and, as it know, were. You know, let us know what you would like. Yep, yep. I can give you the, the keys, Mary, to the uh, my Vista account. Yep. yep. And uh, we can get some, uh, I don't know, you know, unscripted I don't know. ashtrays or something. Yes. Oh, oh ashtrays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we can get something, you know, ready for that night to give out to our, our guests. So. We are going to actively work on that. We're going to have our staff do it, and we promise you, and we will get you a little something, something. Yes, you we will. We'll also take some some suggestions. Of course, this show has a very, very, very well. It actually, has no budget, right? It's a no well, budget. We have a budget. We have a budget. Yes. Okay. We just don't know what it is. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So. All right. Let's go. Here we are. Yes. Uh, here we are. Sword points finally came out after a day delay. It's out there this morning. Excellent. Looks beautiful too. Well worth it. Um, I suppose we should start out with uh, recognizing Father Joe's 25th anniversary. Uh, that would have been three days ago. Yep. On uh, December 14, 1996, 25 years ago, he was ordained. Yep. So in wonderful. Washington. Yep. And um, as I was looking at that, you know, well, first of all, people that were at the service on Sunday saw that that was acknowledged, and uh, one of our wardens gave him a 25th anniversary balloon. Yep. Um, but it was very nice that he was recognized. But as I was looking at his picture, the one thing that jumps out is those glasses. And I got to thinking, you know, which came first? And the answer is in sword points, believe it or ah, not. Which came I know, first? I know of your reference. Harry Potter or Joe Shepley wearing those glasses? And the answer you know is in sword points. It is in sword points. And you really should take a look at that. And I just want to call out to our Cracker Jack staff. That is kind of the in-depth reporting that our viewers have, they don't even expect. <laughs> <laughs> they don't expect and they don't get so they don't get they don't get so it's good but happiest of anniversaries to father joe and um it was just so wonderful and also if you're if you could go to our facebook page saint paul's facebook page um we have a post up there where you can leave a message of congratulations um and what father joe means to to you as part of the past year so please do leave him a message there um it'll kind of I'm sure encourage him and 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 fill his. And it's been very touching the comments that have been left. Yeah, yeah. 
It's, it, it's, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I think it's our um, best post we've done in terms of response and engagement. So um, keep them coming. So mentioning Facebook, I'm thinking that we probably need an unscripted Facebook group. Wow, well, it's an interesting idea. What would we possibly do on it? <laughs> uh, solicit jokes. Oh, we could. Yeah, we could. That could be a very fun page. <laughs> that could be a very fun page. That would be actually very funny. All right, look for that. Look for that. That might be awesome. And you can go <laughs> could and be, be in our future here. Maybe yes, a New Year's yes. resolution. Yes, it could. Not and it's a, it, it could. And you could totally become part of the staff. Yes. Or you could take it over. It could go either way. <laughs> <laughs> you could be the staff. <laughs> it, can, it can go anywhere you want. Oh my gosh. So what, so Advent's like, you know, starting to, uh, starting to end, right? This Sunday. Well, we're coming up to the fourth week, fourth Sunday yeah. of Advent. Yep. Do you know why, um, I was just noticing the stores. Do you know why it's harder to get Advent calendars now? Because their days are numbered. I think we used that one uh, a couple weeks ago. On, Did we? That's all right. Oh, all right. Well, anyway, it was funny then. So I think it's funnier now. <laughs> Okay. It's better the second time around. You know, well, what, like what good leftovers. You know, like linguine and white clam sauce. It's oh, than that thing, you know? oh, man, that sounds so good right now. Um, so, um, but did you know, like I saw some guy, I heard that he actually stole an advent calendar. Do you know what he got for doing that? He got 25 days. That's right. Boom, process that. You want oh, a little man, we are, we are really into the leftovers. We, <laughs> did we say that one too? We did. <laughs> yeah. Maybe my writers need to. Well, I, I Maybe they need to stop watching unscripted. <laughs> I think they think they're so funny that they want to hear them again, which I totally respect. It doesn't count if you get your material from unscripted, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. So let's talk about this a uh, little bit. We'll kind of go through the calendar day by day here. So. Uh, okay. Quilters are meeting on this Sunday. Yep. And I'm, or Saturday at 11 yep. o'clock. Yep. And uh, that reminds us that they're still having their raffle and. Uh, oh, yeah. Sold a lot of tickets. So. When do they pull that? This Sunday? They are pulling that, I believe, at the coffee hour after the 8 o'clock service. Ooh. So we will have a winner. Yes. And they will probably get their picture and sword points. Oh, what if they came on as a guest on Unscripted? And and, and they could do that too. They could do that too. That would that would sell a lot of tickets. <laughs> I'm not sure what it would sell tickets to. <laughs> it would sell tickets, yes. It would sell a lot of tickets. So I'm presuming since you're down, uh, so we have Mary in a stable today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Your praise moves will probably be just uh, Zoom out uh, for a little bit here. Okay. Yes, no, no in person, no in person. But so um, Alan, we get. So on Sunday we have uh, our eight o'clock service and our ten thirty service with Sunday school at ten fifteen. The adult class is the final session of of Dan Bacon's teaching, uh, walking the road to Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. And that's been that's been great, right? That's been awesome from what I yeah. understand. Yeah, excellent. And uh, then in the afternoon, they have two showings of Old Lamb up in the sanctuary. Right. What time? What are those times? Is it five and seven? Five o'clock and seven o'clock. Right. The five o'clock one will be live streamed. Okay. The five o'clock will be live streamed. Okay, great. And then we're giving the staff off for the second one. Okay, great. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what else do we have coming up? Then, uh, then we start getting next week. It's the lull before the storm, really. Mm -hmm. And we can talk of Christmas Eve. We have services at five o'clock. Yep. Family service or the family service, 9 p.m. 
p.m. is our traditional night service, and that one has the full choir. Always a fun service. Then Christmas yeah. Day at 10 a.m. there is a service, which is more of a quiet service. But there are plenty of opportunities to come and celebrate Christmas with us. Christmas Day. Absolutely. Please come and join us. Yeah. And the Christmas morning service is always very special, I think. Yeah, you know? It, that's, that's a nice service. I like that. Yeah, I do too. I do too. So then in this week's sword points, the 12 days of Christmas. Mm. This is really shaping up to be one of our best ones. Yeah. Ever. Agree. So, yeah. You know, Commercially, the stores would like to like us all think that the twelve days of Christmas is the twelve shopping days before Christmas, but right. Christmas season really starts with Christmas Day and it runs through January fifth. Yep. I say the Christmas season, then January sixth is Epiphany. So I looked this up. We've been doing this since two thousand fourteen. What has it been that long? Yep. Well, we took a year off for COVID last year. Yeah, 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 yeah. But for those of you that are new to St. Paul's, we do something every day during the Christmas season, just to remind us it's Christmas. And I would say most of them are Christmas oriented, but then right. not. So starting Christmas Day, uh, we do have the service at 10 a.m. at the church. Yep. And Sunday, December 26th, first Sunday after Christmas, we yep. have worship at 10, at 8 a.m. and 10.30, our normal yep. services. And the adult class, we are going to be showing the video, it's called The Shepherd. Mm, and for those great. of you that are familiar with the series Chosen, this is really, The Shepherd is a video that the I believe his name is Dan Jenkins did for his church in the Midwest. He did this as a Christmas for that. Okay. And it was so popular that it, it spawned off this whole series. So we're going to show that. It's about a 21 minute video. Okay. We'll have, it, it's a very interesting video, and then we'll have some discussion after that. So you don't want to miss that. No, that's great. It's during the adult class time. Yeah. Okay. In between services. Okay. Then on Monday, the 27th, believe it or not, the Guinness Book of World Records for the category private home Christmas light display is actually a house over in LaGrangeville, New York. They wow. In 2014, they had about 600,000 lights and I think they were surpassed. So they upped the ante and they won the record back. Now they're up to 700. My gosh. Lights. Wow. So we're going to meet at the church at six o'clock. We're going to go over there. It, it'll probably take us 40, 45 minutes to get over there. We'll go through the tour. And then uh, on our way back, we will stop somewhere and eat because it's hard to do almost anything involving the church without without having a yeah a snack a fellowship involvement right so that will be a fun night and something totally different from what we've done in the past oh my gosh totally i love it who knew i had no idea something like that was so close yeah it's amazing i haven't heard much about it but i've seen some pictures and it's crazy it's yeah you know, i mean they can probably see it from the space shuttle who knows mm -hmm. and then uh tuesday the 28th this was an event we did two years ago, and if you, not everyone partakes in this, but it's, uh, Tim Huber does a, uh, what's cooking St. Paul's, he does a Zoom class every two weeks. And that started because during the 12 days of Christmas, two years ago, he hosted a uh, cooking class at his house. We had about a dozen people. Yep. And, uh, we cooked pasta and various different things. And then we all sat down. We had a little dinner party eating all the creations. And believe it or not, we all walked away and 
Everyone was fine afterwards. It was Excellent. such a great time. So we're going to do that cooking with Tim. Uh, half cooking lesson, half dinner party, and it's not half baked. No. So because of the response it got last time, we will probably do a sign up in the church because we can't have 30 people showing up. For this. Right, right. That's if you idea. really want to be there, we'll figure out a way to do this. And that right. will be fun. I guarantee you that. So that will be great. That will be great. Where are we going to put the sign up? You're going to put it in the back of the Probably church? Probably in the back of the church. Okay, fine. Uh, and we'll announce that this Sunday. And that is an open invitation. So please participate. Yes. Then on Wednesday, the 29th, that's a Wednesday, we're going to do our free coffee Wednesday. Yep. And uh, I'm sure Mary Perry will be there with a prayer tent and yep. her, her warrior. So it'll be free yep. coffee, free prayer. We'll do that first thing in the morning to people driving by on their way to work. Yep. We'll invite them in. We'll just if someone wants to donate some baked goods, we can give coffee and some baked goods out to people. Absolutely. And at 10 a.m. we have our regular Wednesday Eucharist, uh, Eucharist and healing service. Yep. And then a little later at 11 o'clock till like one, will be another one of our food drives. So. Amazing. For outreach, outreach and healing. Yep. And on Thursday, we are going to do our, I think we used to call it ugly sweater night, but yeah. now we're calling it festive holiday sweater. Oh, I like that so much better. Yeah, that's good. We don't want anyone to be offended. No. Mm -mm. So you know, we're going to do a potluck dinner. Everyone's a winner. And then uh, we're going to head upstairs and Diane Peterson, one of our Newer parishioners, who is also an organist, is going to lead us in Christmas carols, uh, and we'll have a little carol sing upstairs. Uh, awesome! So, and, uh, our, our organist Kirsten is going to be on vacation, and uh, that's not the reason we're doing this. Because no, no. <laughs> but we will have fun. Yes. You know, I ask her every year to, you know, coordinate a carol sing, and she says, well, I'm on vacation. Said, okay, well, enjoy your vacation, because we're going to do it anyways. <laughs> Figure out how to do it. A well-deserved vacation it is, too. Something for everybody. It's That's the beautiful thing about it. It's like, you know, people's gifts can all kind of pour into the, into the, into each other, right? So it's always good to continue to make room for other people to bring their own specific gifting to us. I love it. And on Friday the 31st, that's New Year's Eve. So we're going to throw a New Year's Eve party. Yep. This in the past, we meet in the Guild Room. Uh, bring your own appetizers, bring your own dip, whatever you want. Yep. So we meet around 9 o'clock and we party till around 11.30ish. Yep. And then we kind of organize ourselves for worship and the... Uh, the whole idea there is to basically time it so we pass the piece right at midnight. Oh, so good. It's so, so beautiful. It's really our first service of the new year. Yeah, first Eucharist of the, first, of the new year. So wonderful. Then on Saturday the 1st at 10.30, uh, we celebrate the Holy Eucharist at church. That's actually a... Feast Day of the Church, Feast of yep. the Pain. And for those that are up to it, uh, we head across the street, weather permitting, and we do a family friendly hike in Williams Park. That's great. It's a good way to start the year off. Oh, uh, sure is. One year we had some bad weather and we all kind of went out and got a brunch. So, yep. so, so, I so, so that was fun too, you know? Yeah, absolutely. We're flexible, you know, we go, Very we go flexible. Flow. Very flexible. So then on January 2nd, that's a Sunday, the yep. second Sunday after Christmas, we have our normal eight and 30 services. Between the services, we're doing a, the adult class, it's really a Q&A for 
people that have questions about our Holy Land trips. Oh, good. People there will have videos and pictures of what we've experienced there and people can share their experiences of going there. Yep. We'll answer any kind of questions. We should have updated information on what the COVID travel requirements are. That's great. We have a Holy Land trip coming up in June. June, right? Yep. 16th. That we're we're doing that in conjunction with Tara's Church over at St. George's Middlebury. And there's still room on that trip, right? You can still sign up there for is. it. There is. Yep. That leaves. Yeah. You know, I think our said is January 16th. And uh, we're also explain about our fall trip next year to over Amigal. And we'll have a little bit of information with a uh, basic itinerary for our 2023 trip. If we dare look ahead, we're there we walk in the footsteps of Paul, start okay. Malta, where he was shipwrecked. We're not going to be shipwrecked. That's not the plan, but oh, gosh. where That's he not was shipwrecked. Right. Head over to towards Rome and cover most of Italy, ending up in, uh, up in Venice. So that will that's, be that's a great trip. I see oh. one of your guests uh, walking in the background there, Mary. Oh, yeah, see there. See? Look at that. Little sweet. Very nice. Very nice. Then, January 3rd, you're doing a house blessing. This is always one of the more well-attended. Oh. Uh, events that we do. It's so special. If you have not been to one, please, 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 please and, join us. Uh, so it's a house blessing at the home of Gordy and Christine Hiltz that's in Brookfield. Both mm -hmm. directions in the back of the church. Basically, we meet at their house and we bless the house and we celebrate Eucharist and we have some dessert and fellowship and we get to meet some new people. So wonderful. It's so wonderful. If you've come before or never have, please, please think, consider it because it's so special. And then on January 4th, Tuesday night, the wheels come off the bus and uh, we are going to really roll the dice because we are going to have a live, unscripted, open mic joke night. Because you all know how flexible I am about these things. Yes. <laughs> so Mary will not have a mute button for you. <laughs> uh, we will remove that from the thing. But <laughs> please come and you can see how we will be live. Yes. First of all, we'll do a little potluck beforehand because we don't want anyone to be hungry. So oh, no, 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 no hangry. We'll set up a green room and you can go in the green room and then you can come on live with us and we encourage jokes and yes we do <laughs> and anyone that comes on that show with us will receive a special gift special gift as we had talked design. about yeah. right and it, it will be I, I don't know if it'll be worth the gift but you know it'll be worth it to partake of this extraordinary first time maybe last time but first time ever <laughs> unscripted live live like live Maybe we should call it, let's see if we can give Mary a heart attack night. <laughs> yes, please. That's always a good time. See if I can go. <laughs> <laughs> Not approved. I'm just, oh, you know what? I'm just going to, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I got it. <laughs> no, I can put the graphics right below. You know? <laughs> oh, no. I want to control it. Not approved. <laughs> and then on uh, Wednesday the 5th, the last of our 12 days, uh, we can call that a wacky Wednesday, but that will do we have our 10 a.m. Uh, Eucharist and healing service. Yep. And then Helen and Bobby Pacheco are going to coordinate a movie night for us. We'll go out to a movie and dessert afterwards. Uh, some of us will be on a flight to Israel, travel restrictions permitting. Yep. Someone wants to do that. That's going to be a totally private trip. Yep. We can get you in there somehow, but yes, yes, not on the schedule. But so then, on uh, is um is unscripted going to be reporting from from the trip? Oh yes. Oh okay, good. Somehow, good. even with an eight-hour time difference, uh, you can figure it out. Figure that out. So good. I'm I'm mastering the one hour. We like, we'll, we'll take the uh, technical staff with us and. Uh, okay. 
All right, that's good. Figure that out. Somewhere. That's good. Excellent. So as long as your te technical staff is traveling, perfect. Wow, this is a big budget show. I it is. It really is more than you think. Yeah. Okay. Actually, it's less than you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's this? It's actually less. Than that. Oh. So what else do we have? Uh... Oh my gosh, it's so much. I may I just commend the uh, the twelve days of Christmas staff, you know, wherever they are. <laughs> um, just a a great, great job of pulling this together. I do think it's 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 really amazing. So it is such a great opportunity to uh, to get outside Sunday fellowship and participate with the uh, with all your friends and and get to meet people too and do something different. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, I really recommend the, the house blessing. I mean, all the events are fun, but the house blessing is good. And it's, when I first came to St. Paul's, it was 30 plus years ago, we did a house blessing every month. Mm. And it would be kind of fun to get back to that, especially yeah. since we had so many newcomers. Oh, absolutely. Joe would do that. Absolutely. It, it's a great opportunity to um, meet new people and to have new people meet the regulars, uh, it's it just, it's a wonderful thing. So. And plus, it's very, very special to have, you know, Father Joe walk through the home, blessing it, and just providing all of that joy and God's love in that place. So um, it really is, it's quite extraordinary. So, yeah. If anybody you know, has I'm actually kind of looking forward to this because I was talking to Gordy and Christine during coffee hour one day. Yep. I was selling them on the idea. And as I'm talking to uh, Christine, I say, you know, this is really kind of a low key thing. You know, don't worry about, uh, you know, it's very informal. You don't have to knock yourself out to clean your house. And Gordy interrupts me. He goes, are you kidding? He says, we're ready in a half an hour for you. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, we're very excited. We're very, very excited to uh, get to know them too a little bit more too. Wonderful. Excellent. Um, wow, that is a action packed couple of weeks, right? It really is. And I'm really excited to see the unscripted reporting from the trip. I really am to see. Oh, the that yeah, that'll be really fun. It's good to see other places as we go out to our little mission posts and come back to St. Paul's and go out in the world literally and then come on back. That's what we're all called to do, right? So it's good that we can take our viewership or your ships with us. You know, I, I really recommend to people that have not been to the Holy Land, even, you know, come to that meeting we're going to have on January 2nd. Yep. Ask questions, but and if somehow you can figure out a way to go there. Um, it's definitely worth it. Because I was going through the readings this week. If you look in Sword Points, there's an article on the town of uh, Ain Karim, K-A-R-E-M. Yep, I saw that. Where uh, Elizabeth lived and where John the Baptist was born. Um, it's not something that we normally hit on our trips, but Joe Bernardo and I went on a prophet tour there last time. Yep. Just, it, it explains so much more. You get a better feel for the distances that people travel. Right. Um, and this was a special town because uh, the husband, uh, was a, one of the high priests, so he lived there because he had to be near Jerusalem for when he was on duty. Yeah. Was that a suburb of Jerusalem? It was just outside the city? Yeah, well, right now, it's probably technically part of the metropolitan Jerusalem as it is, okay. but it was definitely outside the, the yep. gate of Jerusalem. Yep, okay. I think it was probably maybe like seven miles from Jerusalem. But just think about that, what it took to travel there. I am. I know. It's really astounding. It's really astounding. You're not taking Uber, so it's really astounding. So what else have you got there, Mary? I don't know. You know, as the, when you just kind of sit here and you get like a little perspective of all the wildlife, and I was like, ah. I heard one time about this squirrel that was really mad at Santa. Do you know why a squirrel would be mad at Santa? Can you even imagine? I can't imagine. I, I, can't I can't imagine, but I can't come up with the answer. You're no, you can't. I, I can't imagine. But he was mad at Santa because he got nothing for Christmas. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, Mary in a manger there. Uh, All right, you go. I, I have nothing else. Hey, Jim, thanks, hon. <laughs> what is Santa's favorite candy? I don't know. What is Santa's favorite candy? Jolly Ranchers. Oh! I'm going to bring that back next week. <laughs> yes. I'm just writing down your jokes. <laughs> we're, we're writing Mary's material right here. Right here, right now. <laughs> All right, what else you got? Oh, I don't know. What else do you want here? I don't know. Give me, give me the finale story. Let me hear the story you have. I don't know if I have a finale story. What? We're Okay, give me another joke then. I'm just relaxing, chilling here. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so, so there were three wise men that came to visit uh, Mary and Joseph and Jesus in the manger. Yep. But what would have happened if it had been three wise women instead of men? Hmm. I don't know. Well, first of all, they would have asked for directions. They would have arrived on time, helped deliver the baby, cleaned the stable, made a casserole, and probably bought disposable diapers as a gift. Is that it? Is, is that the wrap up? Is it? What else would you like? <laughs> Just... <laughs> okay. Oh gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> so funny. We'll just have to add an extra laugh track in. <laughs> You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to pump that one up a little bit. <laughs> All right, so going back to the wise men. Back to the wise men. What did the third wise man say when he brought the gift to the baby Jesus? <clears throat> I don't know. What did he say to him? What did he First say? two kings gave you gold, but wait, there's myrrh. Ah! I gotta, I'm gonna use that one next week. <laughs> I like that one. Jim, write that down. Just you can say more, myrrh, more. Okay, good. Go. What else you got for me? I mean, for our viewers. That's it. Oh. I think we should wrap this up. I think we should. I, I really, I think we really should. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, folks, <laughs> thanks for watching. If I'll, any here, I'll, I'll, I'll give you one more. You can right. use this next week. Okay, I will. I'll tell you what, we'll just say goodbye and then I'll tell you in the credits and then you can open with this next week. Oh, sweet move. Okay, great. All right. Bye, everybody. Have a wonderfully blessed, blessed week. And Have breathe. a great week, folks, and we'll see you on Sunday. Peace out. All right, let me have it. Okay. You go knock, knock. Me? I, I say that? Here. Right, so you say knock, knock. Next okay. Time. I say who's there. You say Mary. I say Mary who? You say Merry Christmas. <laughs> Okay, let's run through that again. Hey, Dave, knock, knock. Who's there? Mary. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay, folks, that's... <laughs> that could possibly be the lowest of love. No, well, it could be. It's right up there. Oh, we should, that's what we should do. All right. Oh, thank you so much. Right, you we'll thought see it's you the next week. Bye.